Hello there, friends! <laughs> I am Andres, and welcome! I am here live at the Caton Children's Museum. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today we have a very special lineup of activity and performance for you, because today, well, we celebrated a very important day this week, and that was MLK Day. That's right, the good Martin Luther King Jr. And so today, we want to read some stories, play some music, and think about the legacy and life of Martin Luther King and how he and his work still inspires us today. Now, before I kick into a little video and a video story time, I want to start off by getting us to move and groove a little bit, because this is all about celebration. And I think a great way to celebrate is to dance and play some music. So I got my big red guitar here, and I got my tambo taped to my foot, so I think I'm ready to jam. I got a little song here. It's a freeze dance song, so I encourage you to please dance, hop, move around at home. And if you want some suggestions, I'll be giving them to you during the song. <laughs> All right. My real question is, can you dance? again. Let's try dancing with our heads. Okay? Here we go. Can you dance? Can you dance? Can you dance with your head? Can you dance? Can you dance to the beat now? Can you dance? Can you dance with your head? Can you dance? Try dancing with your hands, like so. Get real twisty with it. Here we go. Can you dance? Can you dance? Can you dance with your hands? Can you dance? Can you dance with your hands now? Can you dance? Can you dance to the beat? Can you dance? much my friends I hope you had a good time you know I didn't see you dancing but I hope you felt the dancing spirit deep in you well now that we got going with our freeze dance beginning I want to take you into a digital read aloud of be a king but first see a little intro Welcome to the Caton Children's Museum's Martin Luther King Jr. Celebration. Here at the Caton Children's Museum, the fight for justice, education, and a kinder society sits at the center of everything we do. 
The words and life of Martin Luther King Jr. continues to inspire us to be our best and stand up for our neighbors. And these days, Martin Luther King's example and ideas couldn't be more relevant. I'm guessing you're wondering why Tiana is making cranes from symbols of peace. Well, cranes know a thing or two about the importance of a strong flock. And Japanese legend has it that a person who folds 1,000 cranes will be granted one wish. But while this flock grows, let's gather ours for some story time and music fun to celebrate the life and legacy of Martin Luther King. The Caton Children's Museum is proud to present a digital read-aloud of Be a King, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s Dream, and You. Written by Carol Boston Weatherford and illustrated by James E. Ransom. You can be a king. Marvel at creation. Keep the faith of your ancestors. You can be a king. Know that bigotry hurts. Remember how you felt when treated unfairly. You can be a king. Admit that you've done wrong. Just say I'm sorry and mean it. You can be a king. Know that dividing walls should come down. You have glimpsed the other side. You can be a king. Break the chains of ignorance and learn as much as you can. You can be a king. Stand for peace and band together against bullies. You can be a king. Sing a song of freedom. Keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on. You can be a king. Stamp out hatred. Put your foot down and walk tall. You can be a king. Answer your critics. Believe in your cause and state it plainly. You can be a king. Have a dream and make yours great enough to grow into. You can be a king. Make the whole world take notice. Do your very best at whatever you do. You can be a king. Beat the drum of justice. March to your own conscience. You can be a king. Lift up the less fortunate. Be the king or queen of help. You can be a king. Set your sights on the mountaintop and climb a little higher every day. Everybody can be great because everybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and your verb agree to serve. You don't have to know about Plato and Aristotle to serve. You don't have to know Einstein's theory of relativity to serve. You don't have to know the second theory of thermodynamics and physics to serve. You only need a heart full of grace, a soul generated by love. Martin Luther King Jr. So that was Be a King, my friends. <laughs> I hope you liked hearing that story and seeing that amazing artwork that's in here. And, you know, something I want to really highlight that I really think is really important when we talk about Martin Luther King is on that final page, the final screen it showed, we have the children here kind of marching for all these different causes. And when we get right down to it, 
the work of Martin Luther King was very vast and his vision for a kinder society involved many things. Fair pay, workers' rights, ending wars, supporting your local neighborhoods, education. These are things that MLK fought for. There's broad variety. And what's wonderful is to see all these children here in this image carrying on that fight. But now, I want to share with you all another book that I have that I think is very special. Because we talk a lot about Martin Luther King and the people that made the civil rights movement successful. It sounds almost like they're legends, myths, like such a long time ago. But 1965, it's close enough that some people can still remember it. So I want to share this other book that we have. It's called Child of the Civil Rights Movement by Paula Young Shelton and Raul Colon. Now this book is very interesting because it is actually by someone who knew Martin Luther King and the people who worked for the Civil Rights Movement. So let's see, hear a little bit about this child's experience seeing and being a part of the civil rights movement. Going home. Mama was from Alabama. Daddy was from Louisiana, the deep south. They had been called bad names, treated badly, told you can't do that just because of the color of their skin. They grew up with Jim Crow, laws that said black people had to sit in the back of the bus, or the last car of the train, or the balcony of the movie theater, all the most unwanted areas. Laws that said that black people couldn't vote. You see? That's what it kind of looked like at one point. Signs like this. I was born in New York City, where there was no Jim Crow. But one day, when Mama and Daddy were watching the news, they saw something called the Freedom Riders. Black and white students riding buses together from north to south to protest the bad laws. Wow. They watched as racists pulled the students from their seats and set the buses on fire. We have to go help, my father explained, exclaimed. We have to go home, my mother declared. That's right. You see? Family gathering around, seeing, seeing the horrible things going on on the TV. And this family said, well, we've got to do something about it. We can't just sit here and watch such horror. So, Mama and Daddy packed up. Andrea, Andrea, Lisa, and me. And we went back to Georgia. We went back to Jim Crow, where whites could, but blacks could not. Back to the heart of the civil rights movement. So there, it's our family moving with purpose. They're having their goals. my first protest. In our new home in Atlanta, Jim Crow was everywhere. Now, at first, I thought Jim Crow was like a big black crow that squawked whenever a black person tried to get a good seat. Wrong! Oh, you can't sit there! But, really? Jim Crow was a white man who lived long ago. He painted his face black and he made fun of African Americans and black people. They didn't sound very nice to me. I guess that's why they named their laws after him. Because they weren't very nice either. Here's the young girl. 
See, in her, her imagination, this is what Jim Crow was. I'm sure that's what it felt like, though. Strange, mean energy all over the place. Uncle Martin. Now, Uncle Martin, he had a big, broad smile. <laughs> Come here, girl, he'd say. Whenever our families would meet at one of the only pools for African Americans in Atlanta, the Ollie Street YMCA, are you ready to get in the water and teach me how to swim? Hmm. And that's something. It's a good thing that community had the YMCA there, huh? Or else they maybe wouldn't have had a place to gather since the Jim Crow laws allowed them to be separated. Run! I would run as fast as my skinny little legs could carry me. Run and leap, leap into his wide arm opens and fly. <laughs> No, I would scream and laugh as he would pretend to throw me into the pool. But Uncle Martin wasn't really my uncle. Not by blood, anyway. We were close because our fathers worked together. Close because our mothers worried together. Close because we all struggled together. Close because we were brought together for a common goal. We were one family. The family of the Civil Rights Movement. It's true. It's amazing how bonds can form between people, even if you're not really blood related. Like all families, we've had dinner together. And since there are so few restaurants that serve black people, we'd often eat at friends' houses. We might walk around the corner to Uncle Ralph's and Aunt Juanita's, or go to Uncle Martin's and Aunt Coretta's, and everyone would come to our house. There they are all together. See, so they're having very serious conversation. And we see our young girl, Paula, here. Paula listening intently. Now, with everyone talking all at once, I thought they sounded like instruments tuning up before a concert. There was Blackwell, the professor. He was like a trombone, so smooth, clearly presenting the facts. Hosea ambled around the table in his overalls, tooting like a tuba. I was in Selma last time, and we've got to go back. Let's wait, Daddy said the mellow saxophone of reason. I flinched when Big Orange stood up, his huge frame towering above everyone else. That ain't right, Andy, he boomed like a bass drum. We gotta help these folks now. And Uncle Ralph agreed, his voice rising melodically above the horns and drums like a violin. Then Aunt Dorothy's sweet soprano joined. We've got to get the young people involved, she sang. If they can go to Vietnam to fight, they can fight at home. And Mama's flute chimed in from the kitchen, reminding the men and the women, reminding the men that the women would be the key to any march's success. And meanwhile, Uncle Martin sat silent and listening to the orchestra play. You see all these, all these people here, they, we're all a part of the civil rights movement. Dr. Martin right here. Now, Uncle Martin loved the music of his friends, the way they conversed, the way they shared their perspectives. And he knew that each instrument, each one of them needed to be heard. But he also knew that in the end, they must come together like a symphony, as what? Paula, baby, Mama said, set the table. And so dinner went on. 
So there we see Paula imagining her family of the civil rights playing like a band. It's true. When you have a big group of musicians together, they all have to be in sync, helping each other on a common goal. Sometime later, when everyone was done, there were hugs and kisses, and I'm so full I can't walk, and raving about macaroni and cheese, which seemed to come from a magic pot that just filled up every time you scooped more macaroni. No matter how many people came to dinner, there was always enough to go around, enough to strengthen, enough to comfort the family of the civil rights movement. A lot of caring, a lot of love in these images. Selma to Montgomery. Daddy was away a lot. Alabama, Mississippi, Florida, Georgia, while Mama stayed home to care for us. He was away marching, organizing, registering voters, protesting unfair laws, teaching nonviolence. Sometimes he was beaten for that. Sometimes the police took him to jail for breaking the Jim Crow laws that said that blacks and whites couldn't eat together or go to school together or even drink from the same water fountain. Sometimes they put him in jail just for marching. Here's Paul's dad reading from behind bars. And all he's really fighting for is some justice. We see that now. But when Daddy was getting ready to march to Montgomery, Mama said, I'm marching too. So they packed up their three little girls, and we headed to Selma. We gathered at Brown Chapel AME Church the next morning with thousands of others. So many people gathered. It's beautiful to see people come together for a just cause. I looked around and I just saw so many different kinds of people, black and white, young and old, rich and poor. There were Jewish rabbis, Catholic priests, and lots and lots of Baptist ministers. There was even a man with one leg who everybody called Sunshine. There were people from the South and people from the North. One group had come all the way from Hawaii and they handed out lays out to the leaders, you know, the little flower necklaces. And excitement flashed through the air like lightning. Then Uncle Martin linked arms with the priest and extended his hand to Aunt Coretta as if to ask her to dance. And the march went on. carried on, and it was a long walk. Parla could barely handle it. Her mom and dad had to take turns carrying her. That night, I fell asleep in Mama's arms. And when I woke up, I was at my grandparents' house, not far from Selma. It would take four days to march the 50 miles from Selma to Montgomery. Four days of marching. The National Guard escorting the peaceful protesters the whole way to keep them safe. And all over the country, people watched on TV as the group marched triumphantly into Montgomery. And the president, President Johnson, he saw it too. He couldn't deny it. Look at all those people, marching for equal rights. <laughs> the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Then one joyous evening, the 6th of August, 1965, my family sat around our small black and white television set. Uncle Martin stood over the shoulder of President Johnson and watched him sign the bill. 
Imagine seeing your uncle or seeing someone you know standing up there on the TV about to change the country. They watched him sign the bill that would make sure all people, black and white, could vote and no one could stop them. Curled up on Mama's lap, I thought about our march while pictures flashed across the screen. Andrea and Lisa shouted at the TV, pointing out folks we, we knew and the places we'd been. We talked about singing, the praying, the friends and family, even the tired feet. It's true, protesting when you're with a group like that, you really become intimate and connected. It made me glow with pride to know that I had played one small part. But even then, I also knew that we won just one battle. And there were many more to come. See, there's, there's Martin looking over Andrew Johnson, John, <laughs> President Johnson, signing the bell. And the family over here watching it on TV. And Paul's right, there was more to come. One day, when Mommy and Daddy were too tired to march, when they're too tired to carry us up on their shoulders, too exhausted to fight another battle, that baton will pass to us, and we would march on. Children in the civil rights movement. It's true what Paul says here. I think an important element when we think about Martin Luther King and the amazing achievements, what he did and what all those people did working together to make this possible, is that there's still many marches to be had, many things to stand for. We just gotta be in this all together. So I am a child of the civil rights movement. You are a child of the civil rights movement. You have the opportunity to carry on that legacy. It's pretty exciting. Now, friends, before I go and say goodbye and tell you to have a wonderful weekend, I want to play one more song for y'all because sometimes, even when the world seems scary, I feel like I like to think about people like Martin Luther King and how he reminds us that as long as we stick together, we don't have to worry. Don't worry about a thing Cause every little thing is gonna be alright Singing don't worry about a Cause every little thing is gonna be alright I woke up this morning Smiled at the rising sun Three little birds Came by my doorstep Singing sweet songs The memories pure and true This is my message to you but Don't worry about a thing Every little thing is gonna be alright. I sing, don't worry about a thing. Cause every little thing is gonna be alright.
All right, friends. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And keep that kindness and love in your hearts, all right? Have a great weekend. See you next time.